Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the F-18 build series. Uh, we are making some great progress on this aircraft. Last video, we basically finished off with renaming the aircraft, meaning we put new names on the nose section. So uh, in this video, we are gonna start getting things organized as we work forward. So stay tuned and we will hop back into the build of the F-18. Getting ready to put the main tank in. And what I did is I made a little bit of a slot back here, just took about uh, maybe a quarter inch of the former out there just to have somewhere where the airlines can go through and not get pinched. So that's done. Uh, just doing the final uh, items to the main tank to get it ready for install. So what I've done here is I've added a rigid piece of tubing into the clunk line. So I've cut a little section of tubing out, replaced it with some rigid stuff, and uh, that's one of the changes that I wanted to make, but I never got around to it in the tank video. So anyways, the purpose of this, uh, this rigid piece is when the clunk is sitting in the tank, um, without that rigid piece, it can fold back on itself and get stuck. The rigid piece just prevents it from folding back on itself. So uh, that's the whole reason for it. It was a nice quick install, use some high flow brass tubing, and uh, that will go in the tank nicely. So I'm gonna get those reinstalled in the tank. This tank is ready to go. The only other thing here is we need to put our lines, our vent lines on here before we get this tank installed because we don't have any access to this area. So basically these lines are going back to the saddle tank clunk lines, okay? so. I'm gonna get those on as well, and then we'll, that tank will be ready to install. One other important little note here is the center pylon for the big uh, drop tank. Um, you can't use the stock hardware, so the kit includes a bunch of these uh, M3 Allen key bolt stock hardware stuff. If you use that stock hardware back here at the back part of the pylon, it will puncture the tank. The stock hardware touches the tank when you get it installed and uh, when you bolt this tank down, uh, it is contacting the tank. So be aware of that, that's very, very important. Uh, it may not punch a hole in initially, but it will. So I'm just gonna get this tank buttoned up and we will get it ready to uh, reinstall. All right, so main tank is installed and I just wanna try and show you guys the way I routed the lines here. So we've got the vent lines coming off. They go through the center triangle or center shape on that uh, reinforcement piece there. And they go into this section right here, which is, is right there. Now the reason I did that is because this gives our excess lots of room to loop up here. So going from a top view, the line kind of comes off the tank like this and then loops around. So there's lots of free movement there. Um, if we run it back further this way, then everything's really tight and uh, you got some tight bends in the line. So now this line goes to the pickup line on the saddle tanks. Now, yes, I know that uh, this is kind of common knowledge, but I just wanna cover this uh, for everybody. So if you have your UAT, your fuel pump is sucking fuel from that center line right there. This is your fill line. You can see it's the, and this is a high flow UAT. You can see that it is a smaller fitting. So you use smaller tubing for that. Um, this line here is your line picking up from your tanks. So always follow the fuel path. Disregard the pickup for the pump. That's irrelevant because once the fuel system is running, this pulls fuel. So let's fill fuel, okay? Fills up the UAT, it comes out of this line. Then we need to go to the pickups on the main tank or the next tank. So we're gonna have two UATs in this, uh, in this airplane. Now what we're gonna do, and this is just such an easy way to do it, is you Y the fuel lines, the fueling lines, 
so you don't have to get bubbles out of two UATs. Ultimately, these UATs are picking up from the same tank. So we're gonna have two UATs here. The fuel comes in this line, comes out, goes in to the clunk line, filling up the tank. Once it gets to the top of the tank, it goes out of those vent lines we just installed. Back to these tubes, they go to the fuel pickup line, same as before. These tanks fill up and the fuel comes out of the vent going outside the fuselage. Now these vent lines as well too, we're also gonna tee those with eight millimeter Festo line. So big, big line, this stuff right here. And there's gonna be one vent on the side of the fuselage right in this area. I like to do it on this side of the fuselage. I start all my planes from this side, so left side of the aircraft. Uh, I like it on this side just because I can plug it in, have the tank resting on top of the wing, and that uh, just makes life nice and easy for the taxi tanks if you're using one. So uh, that's the plan with the fuel system. So what we're gonna do now is we're basically ready to install these tanks. So with this excess line, I can pull this tank out, put the line on there, put a safety wire on there, and uh, that makes it a little bit easier to deal with having this extra slack. So I'm gonna get these lines installed on the saddle tanks. All right, so all the plumbing is complete. Uh, so as I talked about, the lines come to there. We put our eight mil Festo on the vent fitting of the saddles. They go forward. Now these vent fittings, I don't generally tie wire them. They've got a great nipple on them because this is the vent. It's the last section before it exits the fuselage. So you'll generally see on my, uh, my builds that I don't put tie wire on the vent lines and that's okay, that's the reason. And then we come with those vent lines forward to the Festo T. These are awesome T fittings, and this is gonna go straight down right there. So very, very short vent system and extremely high flow. Nice thing about these Festo T's is there's no small areas in the T. They're, they're wide open, they're big fittings, they're great. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do here while we're in this spot is I'm gonna put the, uh, the hole for the vent fitting and uh, get the line run right there. So then that portion is complete. All right, a little note here for you guys, perhaps even a tip time, an early tip time brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. All right, this tip time focuses around the vent fitting. So most of, or a lot of the, uh, the aircrafts nowadays, they've got um, foam in the construction. So you'll have your outer skin, which is fiberglass and like a foam lay up in there. And uh, if you just put these vent fittings in, tighten them down, they're just gonna crush uh, the fiberglass. And there's actually, like if you look there, um, a lot of the, the, especially the scale planes, you know, there's some, they're not like really, really indestructible, right? There's soft areas. You just have to be careful where you're lifting them. So what I'll do when I put my vent fitting in is just take a piece of ply, like eighth inch ply, a little square, put some epoxy around it, um, and then do up the nuts. So what I do is I use my, uh, my align all tool or hole tool, put a hole there, put a hole in the plywood, put it all through with epoxy in between the plywood and the fuselage. So this just gives a nice solid, uh, spaces uh, the force out a little bit if you get a little bump or anything there, but uh, just helps to keep those vents from pulling out. Alrighty, so we are getting close to doing the equipment layout back here and I'm just bolting the engines in. So these are the retaining plates that uh, I know some of you guys are asking how the engines stay put. So this is all part of the rail system here. So the G10, uh, these are like eighth inch uh, G10 plates. They get installed right there, which prevents the engines from sliding out forward. Now, Skymaster doesn't, did not include any hardware for this. And the holes here are also too small. So we drilled those holes out. Uh, we supplied some M4 bolts here. We've got eight of them, good quality bolts with washers, and uh, that's what holds the plates in place. All right, so still more things to get uh, routed forward. Um, these are things that I just pops into my head and you start thinking about what's going back there, what's coming forward, 
Anyway, so it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to put these fuel tubes on uh, when we're at this stage rather than when the fuselage is connected. So we put those on. These go to the UAT tanks and they suck fuel from the main tank there. So uh, we made these probably too long. We made them exactly the same length. So at the end, when we get this thing finished plumbing, if we cut, you know, two inches off, we do it off both of them and we're even. So got those hooked up. Now, getting these pieces mounted, we're somewhat limited without putting an extension on here and it kind of works out okay. So I'm putting those there, which means that they're going right here in the aircraft. Um, our Royal, I plan on putting right in this area, which means that we need to build a platform for the Royal to mount to, which is okay. Uh, we also need to fit our smoke tank in this area as well too. Now, the smoke tank kind of hangs a little bit into the rear and somewhat in the front. So those are all things that I'd like to plan out now, but probably can't deal with until we get everything mounted. Now I may end up bolting the Royal uh, tray here to the underside of this tank mounting area too. So we'll see how that all works out. Um, still thinking about that. All right guys, and it is delivery day. We got our RTL fasteners order. I love getting these boxes from them because I can restock my toolkits, which is awesome. Now one thing that I ordered another one of was the Pro Hold Allen keys. This is a 2.5 that I wanted. So RTL fasteners, guys, there's a discount code gets you 30% off your order if you use it when you order. So the discount code is JV30. And again, that gets you 30% off your orders at rtlfasteners.com. Uh, any orders over $25 or more. All right, so the fuselage is joined. Don't get too excited, just temporarily. All right, so we've joined the fuselage just to play around with positioning. Yes, look at that bundle crap load of wires. It's just crazy. So I've got some thoughts here as to what we're gonna do for this area and how we're gonna fit everything in here. We do have a lot of stuff to fit in this aircraft because the smoke tank is going right in that area, which is kind of our primary area. But uh, we've done it before and we'll make it work. So. One thing that I've kind of decided on is we're going to put the ECU's data relay modules back here. Um, that's gonna save a couple things. Number one, our data terminals can plug right into the ECU's. So our little screens can plug right in there. That's one saving step. It'll give good access to these units as well too. So that's probably the, the best thing about what's going on here. Now the other things we need to fit on this board is we need to have an on off switch for the SkyMaster light control. Now this is parasitic. So when you just plug a battery in here without this plugged into anything, a uh, receiver or anything like that, the LED is flashing. So it's drawing some power. So what we need is we need a on off switch between the battery and the light connector. So that means our two cell LiPo battery that's gonna power the light controller is probably gonna end up in the nose. We'll have our power lines coming back to the on off switch and then we'll have the light controller somewhere in this area. It's gonna be a bit of a bear to uh, to mount, but uh, that's one of the problems with these F-18s is you really don't have a ton of area because you also have to save space for when the cockpit goes in. So you got a bit of room on the side. So we'll mount our UATs, our bubble traps on the side, and we're gonna probably put our fuel pumps right in this location right here in the center. And then probably our smoke pump right in this area as well too. Now the last piece of the puzzle that we need to fit in is the compressor. Now with the compressor, we need to have a aluminum or brass line that comes off the compressor. So I ordered in today and got some of these KNS Precision Metals four millimeter tubes. They're nice thick walled, so they're gonna be nice and strong. 
but uh, we'll probably use a half section of this tube. That's going to plug into the compressor. Then we're going to have a Festo fitting and probably a Teflon line coming off of that for a little bit. So just those things to think about. Anyways, what we're probably going to do with the compressor, and this is a great little spot on these F-18s, I'll show you here. This is kind of where it's going to sit inside the fuselage. Now what happens is the nipple or end of this comes out through the hole right there. That will allow us to have our line coming out and flexible line and all that stuff. Our main air control is, or air panel is all up here. So that's where all of our air valves go. Now let's chat about the purpose of this compressor for a little bit. Um, my buddy David uh, was speaking with uh, the owner of vSpeak, I don't know his name, but uh, he was speaking with him and the intention of this compressor is to still have an air fill valve, fill your plane up, and this is used for in between flights, during flights, that type of scenario, not a pure, you know, start of the day, turn your plane on, this fills everything up because it's gonna generate way too much heat on the end of this thing. So keep that in mind if you're getting one of these compressors, you still wanna have an air fill valve, you still wanna have an out board compressor to fill up your plane initially. So that's something to, uh, to remember with this compressor. I think if we use these this way, uh, take precautions with that metal tube on there, it's gonna make this uh, work like it's intended and also last a long time as well. So that's where we're going to put the compressor because it fits really well. I was debating putting it here. The problem is if we point this backwards, the tube is going to get in the way of stuff, the smoke tank. If we point it forwards, uh, there's nowhere for the solid metal tube to go because we've got all of our front gear in the way. So getting it up there is a great spot for it. And what we'll use is we'll just use shoe goop. So uh, we'll basically put a bunch of shoe goop on the bottom of this, slide it into place, and then if it ever needs to come out, uh, we can just, you know, dig the shoe goop out and, uh, and get this thing taken out. But I think that uh, is a great solution to that. All right, so now that we've got a good plan for the equipment layout, we can separate these pieces again and work on our equipment layout here. So we're gonna make a tray in this area. We need to come up with a mounting system for the smoke tank and also a mounting system or a plate on top of the smoke tank for the power box Royal. That's probably one of the biggest issues here. So um, I'm gonna work on that and uh, we'll see how things go. All right guys, so we've got our smoke uh, vent line mounted there. I just sprayed some flat clear on the label and we have labeled the fuel side there as well too. So I think I've come up with my tray system that I'm going to use in this area and I think it's going to work out awesome. So basically that uh, that cross piece that's right there, that of course is the tank mount and this uh, plate is going to bolt to the tank mount on that section there. So we come in the this part of the fuselage 90 millimeters. Now I've left this section too long, but I think we're going to come in that one and overlap the front area there just a little bit, which is totally fine. We've got lots of room. The smoke tank is going to be mounted underneath this piece, which is also good. And uh, what we can do is that gives us good access for bolting this tray down in the front section here. So we can put a little piece of wood in this area or two to bolt the tray down to. Now this tray needs to be fairly solid and stable, actually very solid and stable because this is what the power box Royal mounts to. And of course there's a gyro in there working. So uh, this needs to be a fairly solid mount. So I think that's going to work out awesome. Uh, we're going to paint this tray gray, but uh, the vent line here for the fuel system just tucks in like this and it goes right in that little gap right there, which is awesome. 
So I also got the smoke tank plumbed. Now we don't have a lot of room in this in this aircraft for a big smoke tank, but it's kind of fun just to have uh, have smoke in there. So we're going with a um, 1.2 liter, 40 ounce uh, Sullivan tank. Now what I've done is I've basically set this tank up upside down, if you're thinking about this the normal way. And uh, the reason I set it up upside down is if we go with the normal way, the tank is sitting very high in the fuselage. So it's actually sitting almost level with those bungs. Now, if we flip that tank around and basically the, the bung there actually sits right close to the bottom part of that former, we are well below this area right here. So just gives us tons of perfect room to mount that plate. So that's definitely the way we're gonna make this work. Uh, I've already plumbed this thing with the the clunk and everything, and maybe you can see it right there on the end of my thumb is the vent line. So uh, we've got that all basically ready to go. We do need to come up with a mounting system for this. So depending on how our plate system and everything fits in here, that plate might actually hold that smoke tank in place, which is even better. Um, actually, I, I'll probably even set it up that way. Uh, if I can, because that just makes tons of sense. Uh, even if the plate is sitting about an inch high, we can put a piece of foam in here. That's gonna be a really great solution for mounting the smoke tank. I didn't wanna glue it in place, you know, putting up Velcro straps and things like that. Um, is fine, but if we can just have that plate hold everything down, that is awesome. So, great solution to that smoke tank. All right guys, so we've got some parts kind of figured out here on the 18 as far as mounting and routing and stuff. So what I want to do is I want to leave this area open for the screen system that I want to make for this area. Uh, hopefully we can make it and it works out good. Um, that's the goal anyways, because this, as I've mentioned, this plane is going to be flown on grass. So um, what we're doing here is this, I put two filter holders here. Now these don't come with the turbines. These are uh, items that I get made. Uh, anyways, those are going to hold the filter and then this line is going to come to the output line right there on both sides. So that's what that is for. Uh, we've also got our smoke lines here as well too. Those are going to be run and installed in the Y. So we'll have some of the tubes coming just into this area, but it'll leave hopefully that nice and open. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the ECUs or data relay modules mounted here, and we're gonna get this kind of stuff figured out as well too. Uh, I wanna get all of this wiring here run forward, uh, so our back end is essentially done. Now, we're really close to joining this fuselage together. Uh, we've got the smoke tank all figured out, we've got all the stuff all figured out, and uh, really, really close. The last step is just that back section. So I'm gonna work on that. I'll show you guys the final results here. Okay guys, so uh, we pretty much have everything done in the tray section here. Last thing I did was add a few of these servo line uh, holders. These are available on the lighter side of rc.com. Um, the reason for that is basically if we want to plug the GSU in, it's going to be a bit of a pain to plug it into the actual ECU constantly. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to route a little power box uh, male female connector and the lead is just going to be hanging here so then it's way easier just to plug that in and uh, way easier to deal with that versus trying to plug it in to the actual box. So that's basically the last thing to do here. And then we need to just, we're gonna use double-sided tape on the power box display. Uh, primarily the reason for that is just for positioning here. There's no screw to screw it in on this side. Uh, we could just screw it in with one screw, but uh, easier just to use double-sided tape there and that's gonna go nowhere. So that's basically the last things to do on this back end. We've got our servo lines routed forward for the throttle channels and we're pretty much good. The only other thing we're gonna add here in a little bit is uh, I need to pick up a switch for the lighting system, which we're gonna put right there. 
and uh, then this back end is complete. Okay guys, so looking at the mess in the front end of this aircraft, obviously this F-18 does not lend itself to splitting the fuselage for shipping or anything like that, because this would just be an absolute nightmare to try and deal with. Uh, same thing with the F-14 in the background. Uh, you've got everything going forward in the nose, so really everything has to be bolted together. Unlike the Huracan there, which splits right in the back end, and you've got you know a few servos in the back end, and that's it. So way easier to split that thing. So we have uh, run everything forward here. One of the things I did off camera is we extended all of our airlines. So we've kept some of the colors the same. We've kept the yellow and green for the gear doors. And we'll continue that as we move forward. Now you've also got your air brakes, which are right here. And those are also done up in yellow and green. But when we get to the end of the line here, I switch colors. And the reason I switch colors is so this is, um, we know what's going on here. And uh, then we've got all the other stuff here. Our locks for the main gear are also yellow and green. So we've switched that to gray and white. And then the main gear, because we've got more Skymaster line that came with the kit, we've kept that as blue and red and black is break and we've kept it as black. So, so that's our mess there. We basically are ready to bolt the fuselage together. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna get the fuselage lined up. We're gonna put the smoke tank right here and we have to run the vent line for the smoke tank right there. And then we also have to run the clunk line for the smoke pump forward. Okay, and when we run it forward, then we will deal with it at a later time. So that's kind of the next steps. Now, the only other thing to deal with would be our fill lines. Now, we don't have the fill lines in this area. We can run those forward later on, uh, but right now, they're not run. So we're gonna have our fill line for the fuel system and we're also gonna have our fill line for the smoke system. So I could run those now, but um, it's not a terrible thing to try and run later because we've got a decent amount of room beside the main tank there. So anyways, prepping to bolt the fuselage together. And a little tip here for you guys, make sure before you bolt the fuselage together, you run your bolts through everywhere. So this one here, there was so much epoxy built up in the hole that you couldn't get the bolt in. This one here, we're missing the blind nut completely. So the last thing you'd wanna do is put your fuselage together, join it, you know, get a few of these bolts put, put up, lock tight it in place, and then not be able to get that one in and realize that there's no blind nut there. So just check that stuff before you bolt your fuselage together. All right, guys, and as I grabbed the front of the fuselage, I realized that we forgot one important part before we joined this fuselage, and that is the actuator for the canopy. Now, this is gonna be a heck of a lot easier putting the Accutronics um, linear actuator in right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this air actuator out and we will get the Accutronics one mounted. All right guys, so I'll just explain to you here what we're doing with the operational canopy. So um, I looked up some pictures from previous builds and this is what we did. So the spacing where the air cylinder fits in between the fuselage or the little tabs uh, is too wide or not wide enough, sorry, for the Accutronics actuator. And you can't just put this in there and make the right position. So anyways, this half inch ply fits in between there. We use a bolt like this and we actually drop the back end of this down a little bit. So if the air actuator is in this position, the Accutronics, as you can see, gets angled down. The other thing we need to do is we need to make this short enough so it actually closes the canopy with pressure. So the air cylinder actually is about, and this is not a good representation because the mounting point is different, but the air cylinder actually doesn't even close all the way. It's because it's got pressure on the closed portion. So anyways, 
What we're doing here is we switched out the end on the Accutronics actuator. So this is the end that comes stock in them. Uh, switch it out to this guy, drill a hole in the end, put some 440 rod in there. And I took a, the ball joints that come with the Skymaster kit and I cut one down uh, probably about a quarter inch, um, roughly I think maybe six to eight millimeters off. And the reason for that is we're gonna screw this in all the way, but again, we need this to be a short length. So that is the plan for mounting this. This piece here gets bolted and glued in place. That's gonna be our permanent mount. It's nice to have it like this because it's adjustable and that's just screwed in to the ply. So that is what's happening with the canopy. All right, and our fuselage is joined. So definitely not my favorite thing to do, but it's nice to be at this step. I just wanna give a shout out to you guys that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you so much for your donations. It is very appreciated. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, the lighter side of RC, we are crowdfunding for the shop build. So there's been a ton of people that have donated big donations, small donations. They're all appreciated. They're all amazing. And they all go to a great cause, building an awesome shop. So thank you guys for the donations, sincerely. Uh, I do appreciate it very, very much. All right, so no real tips or tricks putting this fuselage together other than your six bolts that uh, bolt the fuselage together. Obviously, you're making sure you're putting Loctite on all those bolts, which we did. So what I do in this case on these F-18s is yank all my wires out through these openings. Now our power box is gonna be buried kind of back in this area. So, we uh, will basically be making our servo leads about this long. So we'll be cutting off about a foot here on all those servo leads and uh, it'll be right above the smoke tank there. So there'll be plenty of, uh, of room. So we pretty much have everything kind of organized nicely here. We've got all of our wires coming out of there. We've got all of our airlines coming out of, out of there. These airlines are from the front section. So we've got our green and yellow for gear doors and red and blue for the front uh, landing gear. And then of course, the last thing is all of our different pipes and everything. So this is a huge step completed on this aircraft and it feels really good to have those pieces joined together. All right guys, well, that is the fuselage joined together on the F-18. So this was a very successful video. We got lots accomplished in this video and the next steps are for me, the fun stuff. So we've done some of the fun stuff with organizing this back end, but basically we have all of the front end stuff to get completed now, which is awesome. So there's essentially organizing left to do in the front section of the aircraft. Uh, we're getting very, very close to, uh, to completion on this thing. So there's probably still gonna be a few more videos. We've got lots of programming to do, lots of synchronization to do. We've got the canopy to finish. So there's still lots to do, but uh, it's, uh, it's going awesome. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to hit that uh, thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.